<coughs> well, good afternoon, I guess. Today we're looking at uh, finding rational zeros. So we're, we're going to be uh, looking at the rational <coughs> zero theorem. Sorry, I just got choked up when I hit the record button. Uh, the the uh, rational zero theorem is what we're going to be looking at. So uh, up here I'll be uh, looking at uh, polynomials uh, that all have integer coefficients. Uh, that would be, an example of that would be where you have a, uh, a rational function and we're going to want, uh, it has a leading coefficient, let me just use an example here, let's say 64x to the third, and every coefficient that's on every term has got to be an integer for this, uh, for this rational zero theorem to, to, to be true. Uh, but we keep adding different terms. Then we get down to the constant term. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to use an example of a constant term of negative 105. And the reason I only use the constant term in the polynomial and the leading term is because it's those two coefficients, the constant uh, term and the leading uh, coefficient, is what we use to be able to determine our possible rational zeros where that polynomial's curve will touch and cross the ground, the x-axis. At those particular real points, we want to be able to find those rational uh, zeros. And rational means it could be fractional. So last week we were working on being given a zero and then using that to be able to help us find others. Today we're not going to be given zeros, we're going to be given the polynomial and then be able to determine using this rational uh, uh, zero theorem, we're going to be able to determine the roots that uh, of uh, the, uh, the possible zeros that this, the, these polynomials have. So what this, uh, what, the, what the theorem says is that possible rational uh, zeros can be found uh, in this form. Some number P divided by the number Q. Now the P uh, comes from the factors of the constant term. From the constant term. That's this one. We're going to use that as an example just a minute to see the possible zeros. The denominator of this, uh, of all rational functions, comes from the factors of the leading coefficient. So it's the leading coefficient. Uh, the coefficient on the leading term. It's those numbers. So this has certain factors. This has certain factors. So those factors, we, the factors of the constants put on the top, factors of the, con or the, of the uh, leading coefficients put on the bottom. Let me give you an example. I mean, let's, let me create another function here that we can use to be able to uh, determine, and I'm going to use this function here because it demonstrates when we have multiple factors. So uh, let me just go ahead and write down every term that it has, but again, the only two that we need to focus on is the constant term and the leading term to get those, to get those factors. So P, in this case, can be factors of the negative 10. Well, it can be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 10. Those are the numbers, those are the factors that negative 10 has that are integer. Well, that can be all divided, let me do it this way, by the Q, which is the denominator of all possible zeros. And so we're going to take that leading term and we're going to plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Those are the possible factors of that leading term. Well, what we do to find the possible zeros now, is we start taking those top, those top uh, denominators, or uh, numerators of the, of the function, and we start combining them now with those denominators. Keely, I'll be with you in just a minute. So uh, we, take, we take that and this is how we're going to do it. So these are going to be possible uh, zeros that we're going to have for this polynomial. 
And it doesn't mean that, the, that, the, that everything that we write is a zero. It just means that it's possible in the realms of rational zero. So we're going to take every, uh, we're going to take p, and we're going to take plus or minus 1, and we're going to divide that by the denominators here. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. So we have plus or minus 1 as an option. Uh, we take 1 and divide it by 2. So we have plus or minus 1 divided by 2 as a possible 0. We take 1 and divide it by 4. So it's going to be plus or minus 1 divided by 4 as a possible 0. Then we go to the next 2. And we got 2 divided by 1. And so we have plus or minus 2 as a possible 0. But then we have 2 divided by 2. And that's 1. We already have it, so we don't repeat it. 2 divided by 4, that's 1 half. So we already have it, we don't repeat it. Going to the 2, or going to the 5, we have plus or minus 5 divided by 1. Plus or minus 5 divided by 2. And plus or minus 5 divided by 4. All of these are possible roots for the particular polynomial that we're working on. And then we go to the next one, the 10. And we have plus or minus uh, 10, but we're going to divide that by 1. So that's plus or minus 10. But then we have plus or minus 10 divided by 2. That's 5. We already have that in the list, plus or minus 10 divided by 4 reduces to 5 halves. We already have that in the list. So this does complete 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16 possible rational roots. Of those 16, because we know we have a fourth degree polynomial, the maximum number that we can have is 4. So of those 16, uh, the 4 that we would find that would be uh, uh, rational and real uh, roots for this particular polynomial would be found in this particular list of rational numbers. So that's one lesson I wanted to give you. That's how you find the list of rational, uh, possible rational roots. We are the Ask Academy.